boys in blue and white who came to America to win the Tour DuPont, and so far, they haven't put a foot out of step. Eric van der Aarden, the record holder of stage wins here, he's in the action too. The Word Perfect team have counted every move thus far. Jelen Idam wears the race leader's yellow jersey. In the team time trial, he gained even more time. And on the main roads too, he's still winning. So far, it's their race. At the Delaware and Maryland, the Tour de Pont now heads into its third state in just four days of racing in this 11-day marathon, and the sun still shines. Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Ligger with Brian Drebber. Today, we are in Hershey, and of course, we're standing in Chocolate Avenue, awaiting the arrival of the race when it comes down from Penmar this morning. Well, so far, this race has gone in the favour of the Dutch Word Perfect team, and in particular, to its race leader, Yellow Nydam. But can he continue today, Brian? Well, he's ridden very well so far, Phil, and I think he's going to continue doing what he has, and that's ride at the front of the field, along with the rest of the Word Perfect team, protecting the true leader of Word Perfect, Raul Alcala, the man that, well, everyone says, is going to win this race. I'm not so sure about that, but what I am certain of is that Yellow Nightham has done a terrific job. He has worn the yellow jersey extremely well so far. There's no reason to think that for today, at least, things are going to change very much. But for those of you that have just joined us, let's take a look back at just how things have developed to this point. It all began last Thursday on Monkey Hill in Wilmington. Stephen Swarth from New Zealand riding for the American Cause Light team was a surprise a year ago when he finished third. Now he was setting the time that everybody else had to beat. Steve Hag of Dana Point, California, the winner of the final stage a year ago, tried to make it two in a row. Well, for now, he's the race leader at this point anyway, until Malcolm Elliott, the new leader of the Chevrolet LA Sheriff's team, hit the streets and bettered his time by a second more. So the tie to beat was now six minutes, eight seconds. The race favorite, Raul Alcala, comes to the line. Not surprisingly, he was now on top of the leaderboard, but it hadn't finished yet. With Alcala across the line, there were only a few riders yet to go, and one of them, 21-year-old Lance Armstrong, who has inherited leadership on the Motorola team. Phil Anderson is ill in Europe. So instead, it was the young Armstrong. He wasn't able to beat Alcala. Instead, it was Yellen Nidham, the final man to leave the prologue time trial start house, and he came across nearly 10 seconds better than Raul Alcala. Teammates first and second after the prologue. So the leader, the first man to go out on the open road when the race came through on Friday from Dover back to Wilmington was Yellen Nydam for the Word Perfect team. He was the rider now in the coveted yellow jersey. The field stayed together when they came back into King Street in Wilmington. A shoulder to shoulder to battle here. Davis Finney on the left and on the far right. Vibrant Venstra from Holland but riding for the American Subaru Montgomery team. He lasted better over the hill. He took his first victory in the United States. And he captured the spotted Cheetah's jersey of the best sprinter in the race. And then later that same evening, team time trial, the Australian national squad with a spill in the final turn, losing a man. Another one goes around him. That cost them valuable time. In fact, they would have had the fastest if it weren't for that. So the Australians failed there with a crash by Patrick Yonker, but the professionals anyway. They were still to finish and were quickly in the stride, and they were shortly to set the best times on the road. Subaru Montgomery, they weren't quite as good as the rest of the riders. It was the team Festina Lotus, though, Brian, who lost the most time, and their man, Stephen Rooks, losing big time before the race really got underway. In spite of Rooks' best effort, the Festina team not able to pull it across as a unit, but Coors Light riding like a machine wore white last year now they're the men in black and driven by roy nickman stephen swart dave mann that's the tough guys they're swart they call him the general because on the training rides he's the one whipping them into shape they put up the fastest time out on the course the la sheriffs coming home however also riding extremely well behind their new leader malcolm elliott and as they hit the line the clock tells the story the second best time behind coors light so Cause Light had delivered the surprise. Two teams were left on course, Motorola and Word Perfect. Sean Yates in the white jersey of the national champion of Great Britain was pulling this team along. Lance Armstrong, his new helper, was pulling his weight too. They were trying to get back into this race. They didn't do it. They failed. They were only third best. The team setting the fastest time of the day as they came to the line was the Word Perfect team of Yellen Nydam, the race leader, and Raul Alcala. They were now to occupy the top four places overall in this race. Finishing with five riders, they put up an incredible time at 28 flat and took the team time trial stage. That set the tone for stage three in Hagerstown, and they were on duty all day long, defending the yellow jersey of Yellen Item. 
So the complete field arrived in Hagerstown together to face three circuits of the town, and then they couldn't control this race anymore. The field were timed together, but once it was now free for all for the win on the day, Roy Nickman near as the camera was finding he was going to have to counter a superb attack by the British champion and Motorola rider Sean Yates. Yates doesn't win many bike races, but when he's determined, he grits his teeth and he goes for it. Yates the winner yesterday, Nidam keeps his lead overall. So on this fine Mother's Day Sunday, the sun still shines for Yellow Nidam, but the question is, Brian, can he keep control for another day today? Well, <laughs> Phil, we've had such beautiful weather, and every time the sun shines for as long as it has, you've got to get the feeling that it's going to end sooner or later, and I feel like, well, for the race, it's going to be that way as well. The weather can't stay perfect forever, nor can the race be as quiet and calm as it has been thus far for Word Perfect. They've done a terrific job in controlling the event so far, but the mountains are looming ahead, and I think then that the race lead is going to change. It may change within the Word Perfect team to Raul Alcala, but the others will have something to say about that. And well, before we uh, get into the racing action, on behalf of all of us here at the Tour du Pont, I'd like to say, hi, Mom, and that's for uh, myself and for everyone. Phil? I'll second that, Brian. Well, yesterday, of course, it was the British champion, Sean Yates, who outfoxed the sprinters, although he finished only just a few inches ahead of the whole field. Today, it could be quite different greyhounds coming home, men perhaps like Eric van der Arden. Well, when we come back, we'll go down to the start at Penmar, where they face that 111 ride bike rider here. We'll talk to our other commentator, Paul Sherwin, He'll with the stars he thinks can win today. And welcome back with the Tour du Pont. We've now moved back along the route to the start of stage four for the 110 miles ride that comes up from Penmar. It's a beautiful day. The riders are all making ready for the start. And of course, it is Mother's Day, and it's the same around the world. Program, program, program. <laughs> well, there you are in all the languages you can think about. And this broadcast is going around the world. Who knows, perhaps the moms are looking in. Well, it's a happy atmosphere at the start. There are 116 riders left in the race thus far. Well, this is the spotted jersey, which denotes the leader of the sprint competition. And at the moment, that's firmly on the shoulders of Vibran Veenstra. Well, in the last few days, we've talked a lot about the yellow jersey. Well, that is the jersey that denotes the man who's going to win the overall race on time. But within the race, there's another race, and that's the one for the sprint competition. Those are the men we see fighting it out at the finishes, risking life and limb to take overall stages, to win points, so that they can wear this jersey. They don't have any chance of winning the overall because they'll lose too much time in the mountains. Well, it might be on the shoulders of Vincer at the moment, but I think over the next few flatter stages, we'll see riders like Malcolm Elliott from Chevrolet La Sheriff, and we'll see riders like Davis Finney from Coors Light, and even the word perfect Eric van der Arden trying to take this jersey away from Vibram Rienstra. It's almost as if the riders like Malcolm Elliott and the rest are unwilling to really get going here. The weather is so beautiful, the hospitality has been so great, and everyone just has a good time. But sooner or later, it's, well, you get out the time card, punch in, and go to work. First, you have to sign in, though, a little formality and a ceremony that the officials require every day. For Eric van der Arden, well, he won four stages in this race, the first and only time he competed in 1989, and he has yet to get one this year. If he's going to, it better be soon. He's going to have to beat this guy, though, and Vibran Venstra has been unbeatable so far. Venstra in a lovely Poldot leopard colored jersey there, but here's the man whose jersey they all want, that of Yellow Nidam, reflecting the sun again today and he really is enjoying his visit here to the United States. Only here once before, by the way, Brian, for the 1984 LA Olympic Games when he finished sixth. Yella Nidam, Schnella Yella, they call him, because normally he is a sprinter. Finds himself in a somewhat unusual position of being the race leader and the man that everyone is chasing. For once, he doesn't have to sprint. He lets his teammates do the work. Normally, that's his job. He is a worker for the Word Perfect team and its true leader, many say, Raul Alcala. For the time, however, Yella Nidam, Schnella Yella, Yella in yellow. They've lot of, a lot of cliches have been on board for this year's Tour DuPont as long as he's held the jersey. The field rolling gently away. There's no big rush. There's a long way to go. It's not like most athletic events where you make a charge for the start line. You can roll out at the back. It only takes about two miles to get to the front. That's if you've got the strength. Because once these riders get into their rhythm, they will maintain a regular speed of around about 26 miles an hour. And that is fast. 
The first object of the day comes at 12.6 miles of Fairfield, where there is a special sprint. The riders now battling out for the points, the gain in this sprint. And a tight battle too, but a man we're coming to recognise daily at the head of affairs in these sprints is the German amateur rider, Sven Turtenberg. He hits the line first again, just ahead of Wienstra. In third place was Jos van Aert from the Netherlands. Three of these along the way, and the points on the right for the mid-race sprints are 5, 3, 2, and 1. But at the finish of the race, you can see where the big points are. That's where Venstra has been most formidable. He just nibbles away during the race, but picks him up at the end. So the race rolls on. We're heading now towards the finish. We'll take a break. We're back with the Tour Duponts. The field has come together after a morning of attacks. Today they face a long stage indeed in very, very warm and hot sunshine. The riders rolling away as they head from Penmar up towards Hershey, passing through York and Gettysburg. Scene of historic Civil War battles. Today we see a battle of a more friendly kind, but to some riders in this race, it'll be just as important. The riders only one small hill to face today, no real challenge on the terrain, just the other riders in the race. And the weather, hot, warm and sunny. The day to watch a bike race, perhaps, Brian, not to ride in it. That's fair to say. And as the finish line approaches, the smell of chocolate will be in the air. This is Chocolate Town, Hershey, Pennsylvania. One kilometer from the second point sprint in Wellsville, Pennsylvania, Scott Fortner of the Saturn team launches an attack. In 1984, this young man, well, he was very young at that time, 17 years old, rode the race across America. Didn't quite finish it. Now he's on the attack for the point sprint in Wellsville, and Yellenitem continues to defend his own jersey rather than relying on his teammates exclusively. Scott Fortner slipping away. There was a breakaway earlier, some 13 riders for 27 miles. They've regrouped. Scott Fortner's taken advantage of the lull. He's gone clear at the 44 mile points covered as we hit Wellsville sprint. He gets the points today and well clear on his own. Galloping along behind him, though, the two usual favorites in this event. Teutenberg and Feinstra picking up second and third. Fans along the way enjoying the beautiful day as we mentioned. And finally a little shade for the riders and some concerns as they begin to head uphill for the small climb that's the only one on the race course here today. A nine man breakaway that went clear in the feed zone. But meanwhile behind them the peloton starts to get nervous in the final hour of this race. A breakaway contains some dangerous men, including a good climber in Brian Walton, the Canadian who rides for the Saturn team, the champion of the United States, Bob Bowen, the young former junior world champion, Jeff Evanstein, here in our picture now, Dave Mann, who featured last year with the leader's yellow jersey after he beat Greg LeMond in a time trial. That started the alarm bells ringing in the word perfect team. They have now got to chase that breakaway down. The lead, Brian, two minutes, 54 seconds. And Dave Mann has inherited the race lead because he trailed uh, Nidham by only 55 seconds. Here comes the KOM and running hard at the front, it's Dave Mann. So the race is on now to bring back the Hares who have escaped the pack. Can they do it? We'll find out. Welcome back to the Tour du Pont. We are now down the road, 72 miles at Wrightsville, an important sprint here. And the main field go through. They're being towed along by Yellow Nidam. They're trying to chase down a breakaway group that's gone through slightly ahead of the field and contained amongst other riders now, Dave Mann, the winner of that sprint, Brian. And he's picked up a couple of seconds in time bonus. Dave Mann in the breakaway and driving it hard. Indeed, won the time bonus sprint. And there were points available there as well. But, well, for the points classification, even Venster doesn't have to worry about it. None of the riders dangerous to him for points are up there. And besides, the points are only five, three, two, and one. More important for Dave Mann is now that he has picked up three seconds on that 55-second deficit by which he trails Yellen Item. More importantly than that, they are out on the road with a big lead. In fact, uh, they had up to a three-minute lead at one point. It's down to about two minutes, and the reason why, look at Team Word Perfect, including Yellen Item. They've gone to the front of the main group, and they are towing it along in a big hurry. Here's the breakaway. Nine riders strong, including 
Villanueva there of Kloss. That's young Jeff Evanshine, the former junior world champion for the USA amateur team, getting instructions from the team car. Also in the breakaway, moving up alongside now, Team Saturn's Brian Walton, who won the only mountain ride today. Here's Eric Vander Arden and Yellen Item of Word Perfect driving the field in desperation because Yellen Item's yellow jersey is on the back of Dave Mann right now, at least here on the open road. So the Word Perfect team are having to pay the penalty now for having the leader on their squad. Nobody in this race willing to help. They're riding in the slipstream, and when you ride behind and you draft, you save 30% of your energy. And Nida might, might survive the race today, but the energy the team is using, they might well pay for it tomorrow or the day after, or the day after. It's a beautiful thing to watch when these professional teams set up their chase in the final hour of a race like this. They seem to know from the information that they get out of the team car and their own internal clock just how fast they must go. But in quite a contrast to the effort being made up front by Team Word Perfect is Raul Alcala and you see Atle Cavalsvall behind him. The mountain men know that their day will come and it is not today. They're resting in the back and for uh, Alcala, at least, uh, his team is working very hard, and he may pay the price of their efforts as well. Well, they call the riders setting the pace, the domestiques, and it's their job to try and haul back this breakaway group. Alcala resting as much as possible, he's reading the map, seeing how far to the finish, and hoping it comes pretty soon, because today this race has been wide open. They are coming back, but the average speed has been up to 28 miles an hour today, the first 50 miles being covered in one hour and 52 minutes. As they pass by Three Mile Island, which was in the news for quite a different reason some years ago, the peloton knows they are grabbing that breakaway, and Yellen Knightum showing his true color, that of a hard-working team member. Because, as we've said many times, the true leader of this squad is Raul Alcala, and even Knightum will admit that as well. Everybody anxious to hold the position. It may seem they're all together in the big field, but each rider expending the energy, trying to keep away from the wind, trying to save what energy they can. Attack now from the free leading group. This is Jeff Evanshine going clear. He senses that the main field is bringing them back, and he's trying to go for gold by himself. What a talent this young man is. Evan Shine knows that he can get a stage win. Perhaps if the field catches the rest of the breakaway, they won't know that he's up the road, at least right away, and that'll give him some time. The field has come back together, I think, and now the word perfect team have gone back to ask, are you sure the time is taken the first time under the banner? If it is, our job is done. And that is the case for the entire peloton. The time is taken when they cross the start-finish line, but they still have two five-kilometer circuits to go at that point. And at that point, the race of 10 kilometers distance is really only for the stage win and the glory of standing in the spotlight for this day alone. Look how close behind the breakaway is the field. Nine riders are about to be caught. So there is a time gain today, Brian, for Dave Mann, especially in this lead group. It's only about 24 seconds on the line, though. The field will stop the clock when they come through, and then they will battle out the race for first place today. The Word Perfect team have pulled back three minutes, almost to perfection on the line. Their job is done, but the gaps overall have closed down. We now race for first prize on the stage as we go round the circuit twice, so we'll take a break. Don't go away. Back in Hershey as the race comes up towards the finish of the fourth stage of the Tour du Pont. The battle of the sprints is again now. Vainstraw has the lead in the center of the picture. Malcolm Elliott's falling away in that green Chevrolet jersey. And on the line, Vibran Vainstraw takes it. The Lycra Leopard pounces again. His second stage win in two days. And that will keep him on top of the leaderboard once more. There's the result. Davis Finney in second place. And Alano surprising with another good finish. Brian Drebber is now down with the winner. Weibrin Wienstra, you've uh, done a terrific job at defending that spotted jersey. I think you like it. Uh, well, I like the jersey, but most of all, I like winning stages. And uh, the yeah, team did a, did a, yeah, did a great job today for me, and uh, I think I want to thank them all, you know. Tell me about the sprint. Last couple hundred yards uphill, it's pretty tough. Yeah, uh, Elliot it was in the wheel of Elliot, and he waited too long. And with uh, 200 meters to go, uh, I just went for it and I said, hey, <laughs> I won. What tells about it? Well, it was good, good finish for me. I, I figured I'd go a little later today than in Wilmington, so I sat back behind Elliot and uh, 
Veenstra and uh, I figured, you know, well, I'll wait because it's uphill, it's into the headwind. But boy, Veenstra just took off at the bottom of the hill and really nobody could touch him. I mean, I came up at the end and I felt really strong the last 50 meters, but a little bit too late. <laughs> has kept his leader's yellow jersey but he had to work for it today but the man who profited most was Dave Mann he's up to fourth place and he's now with Paul Sherwin at the finish well Dave it looks as if you put a little bit of a chink in the word perfect armor today yeah, the uh, word perfect had to work really hard at the start of the race when the, uh, there was a 12 or 30 man break went away. We had Steve Sward up there, so I was sat pretty comfortable. And then uh, another break developed and uh, we were in a perfect position. I mean, I just drove and drove and drove as hard as I could. It was making the word perfect work. And it was the, I kept trying to tell the guys in the break that it was the first time through the finish we would get the time. So, I mean, every second counts in a race like this. And uh, when we hit the hills, it could be an advantage to have those seconds. Another day in the hot sunshine, the hottest in fact, but Yellen Idam keeps his lead, that 10 seconds over teammate Raoul Alcala, and Eric van der Rohden is third. I think uh, tomorrow's the last day that I'm riding in the yellow jersey because uh, tomorrow is the finish uphill, and uh, then it's Alcala in the front, I think. Indeed, it is uphill. The mountains are a-coming as we head up to the Massanutten Resort for tomorrow's finish. Watch it with us at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Stay with us, in fact, for all of the days on the Tour du Pont. Join us as the riders battle it out every day. And don't forget our conclusion day. That's May 17. So, after four stages and a prologue, the man in yellow is the man with the right name, Yellow Nidam. But he predicts tomorrow he will lose it. Will he? Well, we'll find out tomorrow when we go to the Massanutten Resort. For Brian Deborah and Paul Sherwin, I...